Hello, and welcome to our Balanced eSeminar presentation on the Clinical Research Benefits, Features, and Capabilities Demonstration by Daniel Dubiel. I would like to introduce Daniel. Daniel is a senior software engineer who has joined Neurocom back in 2001. He has over a decade of experience in software design and development and has been involved in the Neurocom Clinical Research Balance System. In today's presentation, the learning objectives that will be covered, and by the end, each viewer will be able to describe the capabilities of the clinical research system, customize dynamic conditions for specific research studies, understand integration options with other devices, and understand data export options. Briefly, let's ask the question, what is a clinical research system? This system is a unique combination of clinical and research balance systems. It's available in the Equitest and Smart Equitest model. It includes a research-grade force plate and flexible operating system for research applications. And now, without further ado, I will be transferring the presentation over to Daniel. Uh, thank you, Christina. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you all for, for coming and, and listening. Uh, uh, so the CR system is a Cadillac in the family of balance manager systems. And it provides a turnkey solution for all your balance research needs. If, you're, if, you, uh, if you have one uh, in front of you, uh, congratulations. It's a great tool. At, uh, at the center of the CR system, uh, you will find a custom-designed dual-top AMTI force plate, which consists of two independent six degrees of freedom force plates, which allow true separation of performance in lower extremities. The six degrees of freedom data that, that you provided consists of X, Y, and Z forces and the X, Y, and Z moments for each force plate. The CR system offers independent and simultaneous three-axis profiling in sway, ramp, and waveform modes, each with additional degree of customization. The CR system has been designed to integrate with other research devices offering synchronization interface and data streaming channels over Ethernet. The CR system offers an intuitive user interface for tailoring data uh, dynamic conditions to specific research studies. This interface further expands as an instrument for population management in simultaneous research studies, as well as providing abundant export choices for extended analysis. Uh, before we actually uh, launch the software, I'm going to focus on two case studies. One, uh, the first one will be uh, called Steady Waves, in which I will uh, walk uh, the operator through customizing dynamic conditions. We will focus on the waveform mode, uh, more specifically the trigonometric uh, function. We will uh, touch uh, on a sway mode. We will use the head tracker for, for additional uh, research data. And we'll set up uh, the, the test uh, to progress from one condition to the next in a seamless uh, fashion. Uh, the second uh, case study that we'll, we'll uh, visit will be called fall conditions, and in that, uh, in that study, we will visit the waveform mode again, but from three different, uh, uh, we will, we will uh, establish the waveform movement using three different methods. First one being VB script, which programmatically allows you to uh, define uh, ramp profiles, waveform profiles. Uh, the second one will be discrete data points, which you can, for example, use MATLAB, uh, which, which is common in academic uh, environments, uh, to generate uh, movement profiles. And then uh, the, the third method will be multi ramp and multi joc And we will touch uh, uh, on all of these uh, in great detail. And then uh, uh, as the last part of the, of the study, we will use the I.O. switch box, which is provided with your CRS system. And we will use it, we'll demonstrate how to trigger ramp profiles and create time markers. Uh, 
after the case studies, we will I will discuss integration with other devices in detail. For example, the head tracker, which provides you three other uh, three additional uh, data uh, 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 channels, the I/O switch box, which can further be used to uh, to synchronize with the data collection with other devices, and then we'll touch base on uh, data streaming channels over Ethernet. As the last step, we will talk about the data export options, where uh, we will discuss uh, data selection units, data delimiters, file types, and I will demonstrate how to export multiple subject records. So. On to the demonstration. Uh, just one moment. Okay, so this is a screen that should be familiar to everybody that has the system. I will go ahead and advance to the research module and we will uh, enter case study one, uh, the steady waves. Here's a subject record that I've created. Uh, before before we proceed, uh, for, for all, of, all of those of you who have uh, a static force plate, uh, you are also able to, uh, to do research on, uh, in stable conditions using your, your long force plate, uh, just another dimension of, of research ability. Okay. So, just, okay. So, uh, when you first navigate to the research settings screen, I recommend that you uh, begin your customization flow from top to bottom. So I'm going to uh, to create a test, uh, and I will call it Steady Waves. This is how I will always reference uh, conditions applicable to this study, to the study of Steady Waves. Uh, so. Uh, just, just simply, uh, uh, just stating it simply, a test contains conditions, and conditions contain trials. If you just keep that in mind, the the flow and 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 organization of of uh, of settings should should be quite uh, straightforward. So, for my first uh, condition, I will name it uh, rotate and. Oh, visual waveform. I will use this condition to precondition my subject for 10 minutes or 600 seconds. Uh, and so, so they will be preconditioned in a steady waveform, and then we'll transition seamlessly to the sway mode. My precise focus will be on subject's performance after the waves stop and to see how long the wave sensation, how long before the wave sensation leaves the subject's physical memory. So 10 minutes, I will go ahead and on a, on a rotate uh, axis, go to waveform, go to waveform setup. Uh, a simple steady wave, I will represent the, uh, by using a trigonometric function, sine of t times 2 times pi times 0 0.25. This is a quarter hertz wave. Now, I will also full scale the function. Now, it's just going to zoom in just so you can see, uh, see it in better detail. Uh, what the full scale function does is that it takes your script, your trigonometric function user file, and it simply will scale it up or down so that it can be best expressed by the system, by the motor, by the axis on which you are running this waveform. So I have defined my waveform. I will click on continue and here's the preview of the waveform. Uh, now, since my CR system has been optioned with the clinical envision protocols, I'm also able to use the head tracker for my research. And this is this collect precision 3 DOF data option. Uh, so I will set the collect 3 DOF data option to monitor my subject's head movements during this condition. The yaw pitch and roll data provided by the head tracker may prove useful in the, stu in the study, especially if the subject has, subject has Parkinson's disease. So it will catch uh, oscillation of their heads uh, while, while in the uh, 
involved in a condition. So as I was saying, I, I will set up condition one, which will uh, which will start the uh, the the which which will simulate the steady waves, and I will transition seamlessly into into condition two, which will be which I will name rotate and visual sway. And I will run this, I'll run this uh, the performance of the subject for two minutes. And I will also monitor the head movement, just just in case uh, it proves uh, of great value. Uh, I will set the both the rotate into sway mode at a gain of one, and the visual into sway mode at the gain of one. So a test has been defined, conditions have been defined and saved, and they, they can be retrieved any time to precisely recreate the study environment between subjects. Now, here's, here's a couple things. One, in order to seamlessly progress from one condition to the next, we'll have to make a couple changes in the system research settings. And that is because a trial review graph is shown after every trial, which allows me to quickly review data before saving. But I will have to opt out uh, to have the graph shown in order to map to progress from this condition to the next. I'm going to leave the software uh, setup screen. I'm going to exit. And under the research module settings, I will click on not showing the trial review graphs. I'm going to choose auto-save trial so that I am not prompt, prompted after every trial whether I want to save, uh, save the trial. And I'm going to opt out of show post test comment, which again is, is, uh, is presented after every trial. So with this configuration, I, it will, I will not be delayed between conditions. I'm going to save settings. I'm going to return back to this setup screen. Okay, so I'm going to uh, to select my steady waves test, which again re re. Uh, repopulates all the settings so that they are constant between subjects. Uh, so since I have since I have uh, since I am finished and I'm ready to go ahead and test, I will click on continue. Since I have selected the head tracker to be used in this in this study, I will click on OK. I have placed my tracker on a steady surface and it's being initialized. Okay. Now, again, the, it, is, it is key in, in my study that the condition progresses to the next condition seamlessly. Again, in order to achieve that, two more settings uh, need uh, setting. Auto advanced conditions and bypass test trigger. Here's a warning to, to make sure that that is what I want to do, because there will be no delay. I said yes. And I, I'm going to click Start. Now, the waveform information is being uh, downloaded to the system, and the system is, is ready to to uh, to test. Uh, Christina, go ahead and, and get up on the course plate. Uh, just simply try to be as steady as, as you can. Now, uh, I'm going to begin. Now, this will take approximately 10 minutes. The reason I chose 10 minutes is that during a real study, you would most likely want that 
sensation to be quite quite uh, significant in your subject. Uh, perhaps for this demonstration, 10 minutes is too long. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and stop the, the test. Uh, unfortunately, because I stop it, uh, it, it will not advance from, from this condition to the next. And that is, a, a, that is simply done by design, just because a user click uh, means something maybe is wrong, that, that all movement needs to stop. I'm just going to go ahead and, and go back to here, and I'm going to change the timing to one minute. And then for condition two, I'm going to change the timing to 30 seconds. Okay, we're going to just quickly redo this as to as to show the advancing of condition to condition. Now, the CR system, unlike the other uh, dynamic system, uh, allows 10 minutes of uh, trial length. That is, that is uh, compared to 190 seconds on the standard dynamic. So uh, this allows quite quite uh, lengthy trials and uh, over the other models. Additionally, the other uh, models do not have the capability of a waveform mode, uh, which the CRS system uh, so so uh, widely uses. <coughs> Christina is doing a good job adapting to the waveform. Now Christina almost fell. And why did she fall? Well, because of the wave sensation that was maintained in her in her uh, physical memory, uh, and that is what I have. Uh, I am ready to conclude uh, the study with uh, great findings. <clears throat> okay. Now I have I have completed my study. Uh, the data is waiting to be exported and analyzed and published. So, uh, are there any questions? Okay, I will go ahead and progress to uh, case study number two, in which, uh, as I previewed, uh, I will call it fall conditions. Again, I'm going to create a new test. Going to name it fall conditions. Okay. And in this condition, I will simulate an environment in which a subject experiences a fluctuating depth where they will be moving towards and away from their surroundings at different frequencies. For the translate axis, I will use a waveform, a waveform mode, and I will load a VB script file that I have created which simply combines different wave forms. Again, name my condition. And I will do this for 30 seconds. That should be fine. She may be 60 seconds. Let's do that. So Translate, waveform, waveform setup. Now, uh, I'm, this is where I, uh, I, I click on run script, and the file I'm interested in is here. Actually, uh, just one moment. Uh, that script has actually been written for the rotate. Um, the rotate motor, but that's okay. I will go ahead and use the rotate. And this is how it looks. It's actually 30 seconds uh, long. Uh, any it, it, any uh, script file, user file, uh, uh, any any sort of a movement profile 
uh, whatever the even if your test duration is longer than, than the actual data, it will simply hold position at the last data point. So I'm going to zoom in to, into here. The VB script file that I loaded basically combined the the first first waveform at a certain frequency and then basically the waveform is getting faster and faster and faster. And that is the environment that I want uh, my subject to experience. And uh, and I will also load the same. I will load another waveform on a on a visual axis. Uh, but what I will use here is a user file. So here I have created a a 0.25 sine wave. Okay, that is also not. Uh, not written for the visual order. Uh, let's try a different one. No. Here's one that was uh, scaled correctly. So this is just a set of discrete points uh, generated by MATLAB. And in this, uh, in this uh, movement profile, I am delaying 10 seconds before beginning a steady waveform. Now, this motion type uh, selection uh, choice right here. Uh, Multi-ramp is, is a way of moving from one point to the next with acceleration and deceleration phases, aiming at providing constant velocity. Multi-jog is not concerned with velocity, but, but is concerned with position. In other words, at all costs, regardless of the speed needed to achieve that point, uh, it will try to meet uh, position in a specific uh, at a specific time interval, however the, the waveform was designed. Uh, that is what I recommend be between uh, uh, kind of discrete, uh, continuous, smooth uh, uh, movement profile. If, for example, this was a multi-ramp uh, profile where point A was at 1 degree and point uh, B was at 10 degrees, you would then want to use the multi-ramp because the distance between points is quite uh, large. So I've set up my my uh, condition number one, and again, this is this is where the subject will experience uh, the, their the depth uh, changing around them. The visual will be moving away from them, towards them, and the rotate will be moving under them. Uh, <coughs> My my next condition, another fault condition that I am defining, will be called translating surface. And I, I will again use the waveform mode, and I will set the translate axis to perform multiple ramps. Now this is the user file. Uh, in a via the user file method, I will. I will uh, I will load uh, a multi-ramp profile. Now, this is this is a, a good example. Whenever any profile movement profile that is being loaded surpasses the the amplitude that the axis can express, and that is shown by by this uh, cutout the, these cutout points up here, I can use the full scale function to scale it down so that no, none of my movement profile is being ignored. It's simply being scaled down so that it is expressed as designed, just with a different scale. Now, again, I can choose multi-ramp or multi-jog. I will go ahead and uh, choose multi-jog because these A to B movements are not uh, very fast. OK. Now, I will also uh, engage the rotate axis by using the ramp mode. So using the ramp mode, I'm going to start at the level position. 
so that the subject uh, is is uh, uh, translating uh, uh, without the rotate uh, uh, with the rotate simply simply flat. I will navigate to tended degrees, which is toes down. I will achieve that at 50 degrees per second, 200 milliseconds. But I'm going to tie the ramp delay to a sync pulse trigger. Basically, uh, what, that, uh, what that will allow me to do is I will use the I.O. switch box, the rotate uh, uh, switch, and and uh, when uh, while the subject is enduring the translations, I will watch the subject's performance and will initiate a fast rotate a ramp when I feel that the subject is most vulnerable. Uh, what that means is, let's just say that I that I notice that they re, uh, that they relax, bend their knees, or turn their head. If I if I consider that a vulnerable time for them to fall, I will initiate the ramp movement. That is one way of using the uh, the sync pulse trigger uh, for ramps. Is you can use observation as an input for your study. So I will also this setting up here collect sync line status data. So by by selecting uh, that option, the system will collect all five sync lines uh, that are uh, available by the I/O switch box. What I'm going to do is since the translate um, translate motor is in mode, is in waveform mode, the translate switch is not fun does not function when the translate is in waveform mode. So I will use it to mark in time uh, as I observe the subject breaking posture, grabbing this wrong, moving feet, etc. I will simply use it to do to to create time markers when the data is exported. The translate, let's say, uh, starts with a, a state of zero. When I toggle the switch, it will go to one and then back to zero. Again, I'm establishing time markers. Everything, all the data that is exported is time-based. And we will discuss that in further review, in, in further detail. I'm going to go ahead and continue. I'm going to ask Christina to get up on the force plate. Now, again. I will the, the first the first uh, the first condition is translate in visual waveform. Now the subject shouldn't know uh, what they're being subjected to, and I'm going to go ahead and start. And here you go. Now, of course, you want to make sure that your subject is wearing a harness. These are quite complicated environments for for subjects. There's a lot of sensory input, a lot of changes that are occurring around them. Christina did a good job. And now I will progress over to the translating surface. So the, the rotate ramp is just sitting there. It's not going to engage its profile until, again, I tell it to do so. Now I'm watching Christina. I'm going to engage the ramp profile as soon as I think uh, she was she's vulnerable, but she adapted incredibly well. All right, good job, Christina. Uh, that's that's it. Now I didn't make any time markers. Uh, uh, everything was happening so quickly. Uh, and that's that's the uh, that's the that's the two uh, key studies. Now. Uh, we we will get and we will get to the to the data here shortly. Um, 
what I would like to just quickly uh, touch uh, touch on is the integration with other devices. As I've already displayed, the head tracker, uh, which is which is part of your uh, Envision protocols or HeadShift SMP protocol, uh, is uh, is can be used to to further your research, uh, providing three degrees of freedom, Yelp pitch, and roll. In addition to the uh, to the uh, abundant data that the force plate gives. The I.O. switch box, which uh, if you have in front of you, has has a master in uh, uh, RCA connector, rotate in, translate in, and, a, and uh, visual in. The master in, if you have another device connected to the master in, you can set up your, uh, your test, your study, to be triggered by another device. And the way you would configure that is you, as a test trigger, you would say sync pulse. In other words, the test will not begin until a signal comes in through the master in RCA connector from another device. That is how data is synchronized between devices. Also, setting this value right here, test trigger ends test, if another sync pulse comes in, after the initial one that starts it, the test will end. The, t the, the sync pulse will, in this configuration, will begin the trial and will end the trial. In other words, another device can control the data collection, onset, and termination. The rotate in, and I have displayed this, when tied into the ramp mode and the sync pulse trigger, it will initiate a ramp profile. The same applies to the translate and visual uh, uh, RCA connectors. The last, which is the sync output. You can, whenever whenever uh, at, uh, data collection begins and this output sync pulse uh, option is, is set, it, it, uh, the system will send a, a sync signal through the sync out uh, RCA connector to another device. In other words, this device will be the master that tells other devices, hey, I'm collect I've begun collecting data, now you do the same. You can, however, uh, choose to delay that signal. And this is where, if, if you put in uh, five seconds here, the system will wait five seconds before outputting the, uh, the data collection uh, signal. Uh, data streaming uh, channels over Ethernet. Uh, so this, the system is has been has been written and designed to accept connections from other devices. Let's say you have another computer that would like to know while the system is being operated uh, and the subject is on a force plate what the current motor position is, what the COF, the center of force of, of your subject is, what is the load cell data. Let's say that that computer will uh, will uh, begin some sort of a, a display uh, uh, for the subject or begin playing some music when, let's say, uh, the, the patient's, uh, the subject's center of, of force is off-center or if the motor position is at, at one extremity. It, all that data is available to other devices, other computers to react to. Uh, further, when that, when that data is presented to the other devices through the I.O. switch box, those devices can, can, can initiate RAM profiles. Again, if the subject center of force is all the way forward, instead of me observing Christina and initiating, uh, let's say, a, a, another ramp, the device on the other end knows that center of force is way off center. That makes my subject vulnerable. And that signal will be sent to, uh, to our system to initiate the ramp profile. That covers the integration with other devices. Now for data export. So we have had two studies which we, in which we have collected data. I will go ahead and click on the export button, and uh, and we we are navigated to uh, to a cap to a list of, of subjects. This is the subject for which I've collected all of this data. 
Now, before we start exporting, I would like to click on this Options button to uh, familiarize you with the export options. Now, anyone, in any one study, in any one uh, trial, we can collect water positions, load cells, center of force, center of gravity, accessory channels, and the head tracker data, which is the three degrees of freedom data. You can unselect any one of these, which do not uh, further, uh, which you do not need for, for further analysis, and that will make the file sizes smaller. But if you are interest, interested in all of them, they are available. Uh, we provide uh, uh, a lot of units for, for each one of these uh, fields, and you can set them uh, to your liking. Other settings that are available, you have two choices for data delimiter. Both the space and double quotation comma can, is, it can be easily used to import data into Excel or other uh, software. And then file types. Uh, by default, we export all of the data into a single trial file. And the other option is we can put in each trial in its own data file. And uh, that the naming of that trial can, be, can contain the condition name, which, for example, was uh, rotate in visual waveform, uh, test comment if you enter that subject ID, etc. Uh, and uh, you can you can change your decimal precision to to five uh, data data points. Uh, and on a on a surface, this this should uh, allow you to to export the data. Uh, we only have one subject, but if there were multiple subjects, you could simultaneously select them all by clicking this button right here, and then export. All the data would be exported as, as a batch a process into, uh, into location. Here, I have selected a single subject. I'm just going to the default data directory, which is balance research data. And here it will export all my trials. Would you like to open the export directory? Yes, I would. And because I have selected one trial in each uh, file, I have multiple files. So let's go ahead and visit one of them. All files contain a file header, which simply identifies the trial well, with the subject. Additional data that's presented uh, in the header is time, date of the of the of the trial, uh, the condition, condition name, number of trials, data rate, test duration, etc. Now, the data that I was collecting, the, the way that I have defined the condition, dictates what data is being saved. Because I only used the rotate motor, I there was no need to uh, to collect translate or visual motors at uh, a position because they were at level position and unused. So. Rotate position is available. Center, center. Uh, 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 here, here's where we're getting down to the six degrees of freedom uh, supplied by each force plate. Here's the force X for the long uh, left force plate, force Y for the left force plate, force Z for the left force plate. Moment X for left, moment Y, moment Z. Followed by the same set of data for the right force plate. You scroll further to the right. We provide the center of force for your left force plate, x, x and y, and center of force for the right force plate, followed by combined center of force for, the, for both force plates, right here, followed by center of gravity, or combined center of gravity position for the entire force plate, followed by uh, the head tracker data, which I specified to collect, again as an additional uh, dimension of, of possible uh, possible uh, you know, effect of, of, of the of the waves on the subject. Uh, that basically covers the, uh, the the demonstration. Very last thing, just wanted to display. Uh, as I started talking about the, the ability, the system provides ability to, for you to manage multiple populations among different research studies. You would simply select this, the use multi-group directory database management. You would save settings. 
And then when you navigate to the research module, you will, you, you will see a new interface which allows you to define groups. For example, I'm going to create a, a new group. I'm going to call it the uh, older, older population. And they will be in my older population directory. I'm going to save that group, and I'm going to select it and continue. Now, every subject that comes in that would qualify as, a, a, uh, as the older group will be simply contained in this file cabinet. When I, there's no one in there. Next time, uh, let, let's say uh, somebody from a different department would like to use your CRS system and do their own study. They would create their own group and would have their uh, subjects uh, contained. This way, no, no one uh, uh, writes data into uh, their own uh, you know, patient files, subject files, et cetera. And that's the gist of uh, the CRS system. Uh, I'm sure there's many questions. Uh, we will have uh, follow-up seminars. Uh, and uh, I turn you over to Christina. Thank you so much for that wonderful presentation, Daniel. That will conclude today's presentation.